Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah. Father, hide me behind the cross. It's been none of me, but all of you. Speak of these of the clay, and I leave here singing. I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, hallelujah. The glory and the presence of God is all over this message this morning. Good morning, Brother Paul. Hello, God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait for a few more people to tune in. Going to tag a few more people. Brother Michael, good morning. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother. Praise the Lord. I'm going to wait for a few more people to tune in, and then we're going to get started. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to entitle this message today. I'm going to entitle this message today, You Can't Hold Back What God Has Promised. You Cannot Hold Back What God Has Promised. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah, you cannot hold back what God has promised. Hallelujah. Well, I'm ready now. Hallelujah. Jeremy, God bless you, brother. Ah, my brother, Yule, God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm glad you could tune in today. Hallelujah. If y'all have not shared this message yet, begin to share it today on Facebook. People have got to hear this message today. You can't hold back what God has promised. Sister Lisa, good morning. God bless you. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be dealing with children. I'm going to be doing a message on children and the reason they are the way they are today in the body of Christ. It's going to be a powerful message. You don't want to miss tomorrow's message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10, and this is going to be the only chapter I pull from today, but it's going to be a teaching preaching concerning the Holy Spirit and also concerning how to be free from religious prejudice. prejudice <laughs> That's a hard word for me to say. But there's a lot of people who think that God can't move through somebody because of the denomination that they are. But we're going to get rid of religious prejudice today. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Hey, Sister Landa, God bless you. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. Hallelujah. He was, an, he was a captain of the guard. He was in charge over a military position. But check this out. A devout man. He was a Christian. And one who that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He was a tither in the church. And he was a prayer warrior in the church. He was fighting physical battles as well as spiritual battles. He was a man who knew how to pray and he was a man who knew how to give. Oh, come on, somebody. You better listen to me now. I'm not talking about, you know, just money. I'm talking about how he knew how to give to God that which belonged to God. He gave to Caesar what was Caesar. And he gave to God that which was God's. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He paid his bills and he paid his tithes. Can somebody say amen? A devout man, one who feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about Evidently, about the night hour of the day, an angel of God coming in. Ha, Brother Cornelius is watching. His name's Cornelius. And the, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He saw a vision evidently about the night hour of the day, an angel of God come in 
to him into the house where he was at and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms have come up for a memorial before God. Anything you give unto God, he will repay it back to you. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The Bible said those who give unto the poor lend unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God was blessing him back for what he had given to the Father, both in prayer and in alms. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. This kind of message gets a lot of people mad because it's talking right here about giving. That gets a lot of people mad, but let me tell you something. He was a giver and a prayer warrior. I can't help it. If this is what it says, you just got to go with it. Hey, Sister Tamara, God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless God. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. Thank you, Lord. He was afraid because of the glory that was coming off of this angel of God. There's a lot of people that get shocked when God actually shows up in their life. They've been doing what they're supposed to do. They've been believing. They've been praying. They've been giving. All of a sudden, God shows up and they get shot. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Don't get shot when God shows up. Woo, I think I just got Wednesday's word. Oh, glory to God. Don't get shocked when God shows up. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Hallelujah. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon that this angel showed up, the ninth hour of the day. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms have come up before a memorial before God, as a memorial before God. The Bible said that there's an angel that censors the prayers of the saints before God in the book of Revelation. He said that there's an angel that censors the prayers before God. And they go up as a beautiful fragrance unto the Lord. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about that censer that the angels got. And he's sending these prayers up before God. And it's going in to the it's going up to the throne as a memorial. The prayers are ever before the throne of God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why the Bible says that Jesus daily stands before the Father to make intercession for you and I. He's doing what he said he would do. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. But he also said, if I go away, I will send the Comforter. He said, but if I do not go away, the Comforter shall not come. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I'm glad the Holy Ghost came. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I want you to know, friends, Acts chapter 10, where we're reading from today, Acts chapter 10 is where you got in. If you ain't Jewish and you're a Gentile, Acts chapter 10 is where you got in. Somebody say, thank God, Acts chapter 10 is where I got in. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Acts chapter 10 is where you got in. Bless God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Verse 5. And now send men, he said, to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. God done reconstructed his name and gave him a new identity. See, the first time before Je the, the first time when Jesus actually was naming them, he waited for a little while to name Peter. <laughs> Glory to God. Peter, Petros, the rock. He named Peter after everybody else had got their name because he got an identity of who God was and nobody else caught it. And Jesus said, Upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock. What rock? This truth. Upon this truth I shall build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this truth. That Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Hello, Beverly. God bless you. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, it said. But the angel told him, Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. God named him Peter. So he said, His name is Simon, which means loose liquid, but I've called him Peter, which means the rock. He said he's got two there, there's two sides to Peter. There's one side which is loose, but there's the other side which is sturdy in what I've told him to be. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know what God allowed the enemy to do? He allowed the enemy to squeeze all of that liquid out of Peter. He allowed him to be sifted and get all the crud out of Peter's life so he could use him. He said to Peter, he said, Satan has required that I sift I let him sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. He said, Satan has required that I allow him to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. He said, I'm going to let the enemy have his way with you for a season. But when you are converted, go and strengthen your brethren. Are you hearing what I'm preaching this morning? Thank you, Jesus. He said, go and strengthen your brethren. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, when you are converted, go back and strengthen your brethren. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to allow the enemy to have his way involving getting that junk out of your heart and out of your life that's going to make you continue to fall. And he said, I'm going to make it so you can't fall away from me again, Peter. Can somebody say amen? I hope I'm blessing somebody this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And now send men to Joppa and look, for, go and find someone whose surname is Peter. Go for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtst to do. He was living with another Simon. The rock was with a rock. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes you might feel like your life's between a rock and a hard place, but God is with you. Somebody needed to hear that. Thank you, Jesus. And saw heaven... Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. He lodged with Simon a tanner, who, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou art to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called to two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. He was devout both to God and to his master. Thank you, Jesus. The whole household had faith in God. Thank you, Jesus. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Can somebody say, thank God for Joppa? There he's God. On the morrow as they went on their journey, the next day as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up unto the housetop to pray about the sixth hour of the day. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He was thinking about eating. It was early in the morning. He was thinking about eating. But you know what? He was up on that rooftop. He was on the rooftop. But it said that Cornelius waited for them and he had called together his kinsmen and new friends. 
Oh, that, that, I'm, I'm in the wrong verse. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. He fell into a trance, and he saw heaven and a certain... He saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Now remember Acts 2.17, Jesus said, You shall be my witnesses, first in Judea, then in Samaria, then in all the other most parts of the world the four corners of the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's Acts 2, 17. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping thing and fowl of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter. Kill and eat. Hey, Sister Vicky, God bless you. Hallelujah. He said, Rise, Peter. Kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Wait, th this happened three times. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that, uh, that call not thou common. Hey, Brother Patrick, God bless you. Hallelujah. He said, what God has cleansed, call that not common. Let me tell you something. A lot of people think right there that that is where the Lord said, I can change the law. They, they, they think that they can go ahead and eat any ungodly thing. They think that they can change their diet now into something that's not acceptable in the eyes of God. And we wonder why we're getting so doggone sick as dogs. Because we're eating poison food sacrificed unto idols. There is a certain tag with a blue tag in the meat market. If you go and buy it in the grocery store, it is actually food that the Muslims have dedicated to Allah. I'm serious now. You can check that out. It's a blue tag. And if you're eating that food, you're eating food that's been cursed. Now, I know that you shall eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. But what I'm telling you is God never changed the dietary laws. He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. What was the curse of the law? Man's inability to keep the law. But what he did tell us, because see, if the dietary laws had changed, why in 2 Timothy did he say there's going to be those who eat food in the last days sacrificed unto idols? The Bible said in the book of Revelation that the spirit of Jezebel will talk the church into eating food that's been sacrificed to idols. God still requires us to have a certain diet. And that's why I've been losing weight because I've been... I've been starting to do that diet the way it should be done, and I'm learning my body's getting back into shape. It's getting better and better because I'm learning to follow the dietary laws of God. Thank you, Jesus. But a lot of people say, well, he said, I, you know, it's not unclean anymore. But look at this. He was talking about the Gentiles when this verse was given. Because look, let me go ahead and say this. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again unto heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean, behold the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hey, Brother Lamar, God bless you. Alexis, God bless you. Hallelujah. But see, the dietary laws did not change. I just wanted to clarify that, okay? Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people might get mad at me about that, but I'm just telling you what the Bible says. If you got a problem with what I'm preaching, you got a problem with the Word of God and not with me. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself, he didn't understand the vision. See, we who are prophets, we know in part, we prophesy in part. I smell smoke right now as I'm preaching. Praise God, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are prophets. We prophesy. And we see in part. We prophesy in part. He didn't understand the vision. There's some things God will show you. You just got to sit there and ponder that thing for a while. Lord, I don't understand it, but I'm just going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I, I'm just going to ponder that for a while. I'm going to continue to do your work, but until I figure out the vision that you've sent before me, I'm going to continue to pray about it and just believe you for the answer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, while Peter doubted in himself the vision which he had seen, what the, he didn't know what the vision meant. But the people that came in the house of Cornelius came in the inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked where, whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Thank you, Jesus. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, bless God, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Oh, glory to God. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Do not doubt the house that they come from. Do not doubt these people, for I'm the one who sent these people to you to go and get you to bring them to them. He said, don't doubt that they're from me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I tell you, I believe Peter probably thought in himself, God, what kind of stuff have you got me into now? <laughs> Glory to God. I bet he thought, Lord, what have I got myself into? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Frederick, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. He said, do not doubt. He doubted the vision, and the Spirit said, do not doubt that I have sent them. Don't doubt anything, he said. It says, now while Peter doubted the vision, behold the men which had stood at the gate. Verse 20. Arise therefore, get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him, verse 11, from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye see. What is the cause wherefore you are come? What do you want with me? Shakia, God bless you. Hallelujah. Sister Nikki, God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you too, brother. Hallelujah. He said, what do you want with me? Well, he was really curious, like, God, what have you sent me to do, and who are these people that know who I am and where I'm at? Bless God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. But look at this. There's a lot of people who will come against a prophet who knows their address. They say, oh, that's demonic. That's religious prejudicism right there. They say, oh, that's not of God because that prophet knew my address. Wait a minute. The Bible said that the angel of the Lord told them to the, the, the house of Cornelius how to get to Simon Peter, told a Gentile his address, and Jesus also told Paul's address to a man named Ananias. Ha <laughs> ha, glory to God. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not demonic for a prophet to call out your address. It's of God. It's a sign that God is speaking through that prophet. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A lot of people don't believe that God can use a Baptist. A lot of 
People don't believe that God can use a Methodist. They, they believe that there's a certain person that's got the anointing, and then there's everybody else that ain't got it. They just think they got it. It's time we laid down religious prejudice. Prejudiceness. I'm trying to say that word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Set aside every religious prejudice and begin to follow after Jesus. Amen. He did not have a denomination when he came to the earth and established his glory here. There was no religious prejudice. But because of the doctrinal errors in the church, because of the disagreements of the way he said what he did to them, they disagree on how he said it. We've got every denomination because we've got so many people that have been church hurt that they don't even want to go to church anymore or they leave and start their own doctrine and become part of the first church of the frigid air who are the part of the chosen frozen because they ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because they left too soon. They've been sitting down so long that they got up too soon and missed the miracle altogether. God wants people to receive the miracle. The greatest gift is sal the greatest miracle is salvation, but the greatest gift is receiving the Holy Spirit when you become born again. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to shock some Baptists right here, okay? See, the Baptists believe the moment you get saved, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me say this. You are sealed with the Spirit. He comes to live inside of you. You have His seal. But the Bible said they received the Holy Ghost with other tongues by the laying on of hands. They received the Holy Ghost. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said Jesus breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He sealed them but he had not yet filled them. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Somebody needs to say it again. Acts chapter 10 is where you got in. If you're a Gentile, Acts chapter 10 is where you got in. Amen. And called and asked, whether, whose surname was Peter, but verse 21. Then Peter went down and asked them what they wanted of him. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one that feareth God of a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear a word, hear words of thee. He said he was told by God to come get you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Then called he them and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went up from Joppa and accompanied him. They accompanied him from Joppa. But they stayed that night in that hotel. They stayed that night at that home. Thank you, Jesus. Can you only imagine the conversation they had? I know that they used horses back then, but I'm sure they were probably jet lagged. I bet they had had enough of that travel. It was a day's journey over there. They'd been riding that horse all day. Some people riding a dead horse too long, I hear God say. Hallelujah. Get off the dead horse and ride a good one. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says... If walking, if riding with horsemen weary you, how, if walking with the footmen weary you, how will you contend with the horses? Come on, somebody. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope people are getting blessed by this word today. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then called he unto them and lodged them, and the morrow he went out away with them. 
and a certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So Peter sent somebody else with him to the house of Cornelius. He didn't go by himself or with the other two men. He actually went with another brother. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And the morrow after they entered into the into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he called together his kinsmen and near friends, and as Peter was coming into Cornelius, met him, and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Whoa, that's a mistake right there. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up by thyself. Stand up. I myself also am a man. That's where the church has a problem. They treat a lot of ministers like they're God. I'm going to send some rebuke right here in Jesus' name. There's a lot of ministers who treat, there's a lot of people who treat ministers as if they're God. They lift them up on a pedestal and begin to treat them like they are God when they are not. That's why you see so many ministers dying in the 50s and 60s going home early because the Bible said that they were not worthy of, the people were not worthy of the mantle that these prophets carried because they gave glory to man instead of glory to God who had sent these men and women of God out there. There's a lot of people that don't believe in women preachers because Paul said, I would not, I, I would have it that the woman would wait and ask her husband till she gets home. Ask her what? If it was involved in preaching, it would have to do nothing with asking. What it was talking about was church was segregated in the time of Paul, and they were saying one across the other way, what did he say? What did he mean by that? And Paul, like he always did, got very annoyed and said, I would have that the husband, the wife would ask her husband when she got home. And they turned it into a doctrine of the church. It's not even a doctrine. It was a misunderstanding, and they turned it into a doctrine, and it's begun to split the church. See, let me tell you something. God used women from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, if God had no problem with a woman carrying his living word, he has no problem with that woman carrying his written word and his spoken word. Because of one reason, one reason and one reason only. Because the women carried the word one to the other. Because Mary came to Elizabeth, her cousin, gave her the good news, the gospel of who was coming and of who she was conceived by. Mm, bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said that the baby leapt in Elizabeth's womb and Elizabeth and John were filled Filled, filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say filled. She and John received the first Pentecost before Pentecost ever came. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That is one of the reasons. The second reason is John is the only one to ever lay eye on the Holy Ghost. He's the only one to ever lay eyes on the Holy Ghost and see what Jesus Mm, bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To see the Holy Ghost. He saw the Holy Ghost. He was the first one to experience Pentecost, and he was the first one to ever see, and the only one to ever see what the Holy Ghost looks like. Now see, also, here's another thing. The Bible shows us that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. He descended gently is what it's saying. He did not descend in the bodily form of a dove. He descended bodily, but it was more like he saw a person nobody else could see. John saw a person that nobody else could see is what I'm trying to say by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Glory to God. That's why Jesus said he was the greatest of all of the prophets that had ever been or ever would become. See, another thing that a lot of people believe is miracles have ceased. My brother, uh, my brother Yule knows that miracles are still real. Praise the Lord. God healed his back. God healed his eyes. God delivered him from the devil. God filled him with the Holy Ghost and fire. Everything that a lot of people are saying don't exist no more. God is doing still today. But if you don't want it, friend, it's, it's up between you, it's between you and God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But the Bible says, what if some don't believe? It's not for everybody. It's only for those who believe. Like my spiritual father, R.W. Shambach said, Mark me down as a believer. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow them that believe. The Bible said that there's a day coming when miracles will cease, when tongues will cease. Amen? That's right. He came humbly as a dove, came gently upon the shoulders of Jesus. Bless your Holy Ghost. Whoosh, I got him outside. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I didn't know I was going to get into all of this today, but this is really good. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. But, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Also, let me say this about the women. The Bible said the women rose up and preach. As soon as Jesus died, the centurion said, surely this is the Son of God, was the Son of God. This man was the Son of God. The women went and preached to the soldier, the Bible says. What did they preach? He just wasn't was the Son. He is the Son. He's going to live in three days. He's coming back. That's what they preached to him. Why? Because the Bible said when everybody else was hiding out like cowards, when the men were hiding like cowards, the women were there preaching that he was going to rise because the women were there at the tomb of Jesus. Bless your Holy Ghost. Somebody better get excited. Like I said earlier, you can't hold back what God has promised. This is what I'm preaching today. I hope you're getting blessed. I told you it was going to be two messages in one. <laughs> Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He said one day miracles would cease. One day tongues would cease. But when is that day? The day we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. On that day we all get to heaven, there won't be no need to pray in tongues. There won't be no need for a miracle because we've already got it. There's a day coming when it will be over. But it ain't today. We ain't all in heaven yet. But see, they hold on to one thing instead of searching it out to turn it into a doctrine. And it becomes dangerous and it becomes a hindrance to the body of Christ. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said me free. Yes, he said me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Now I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Praise the Lord. He said me free. I'm excited this morning. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But Peter was worshipped by Cornelius. But Peter took him up and said, Stand up by thyself. Stand up. I myself also am a man. We're fallible. We're human. We're flesh and blood. That's why we need to get in our Bible every morning, pray every morning, pray in tongues, worship God, to make sure that flesh is dead for the day. <laughs> and then continue to worship God through the day. There's sometimes that flesh still wants to rise up. Especially when somebody cuts you off in traffic. 
<laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another of another nation. He was saying, You're a Gentile, I'm a Jew. He said, It's not lawful. He said, It's against the law. He said, I, I'm to the letter, and the letter killeth, my friends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But to get God's glory, sometimes he'll call you out of your comfort zone. Come on, somebody. Can you get excited with me in the Holy Ghost? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up. I myself also am a man. Then he saw how many people were there, and that they were all Gentile. And he said, This isn't lawful. And it said unto them, You know that it is unlawful. Verse 29. Wait, wait, wait. Verse 28 still. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now he's understanding the vision. Therefore I come unto you without gain, saying... As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And at the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. There's actually a friend of mine who prayed for an angel. He was actually praying that God would call him into the ministry. And he prayed that God would send him an angel as a confirmation. He locked himself in a basement for four days. After four days, at three o'clock in the morning, an angel appeared to him. He got so freaked out, he took off and left the angel sitting in the basement. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The pastor had been up all night praying and he had decided to leave the church and there he saw that young brother who at the time was very young he ran up to him and he said pastor there's an angel in the basement and he said didn't you pray for one he said yeah but he said I'm scared of him he's a big angel pastor said you better go back down there and see what that angel wants <laughs> so he came back down there and the angel said come here <laughs> He said, three days ago, I was sent from the throne of God for you, and you run off on me. He said, God said to tell you, you are called. And he accepted the call of God, got filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, and started preaching. Hallelujah. I, I just thought about that story as I was reading it. It's a funny story to me, but I just thought about that. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can imagine that that's probably how that angel felt with Cornelius. You sent for me, now you're scared to talk to me. Wow. <laughs> Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> and Cornelius said, For four days I was fasted. And said, verse 31, said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms have been remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither sir man, uh, Hither Simon, whose surname is Peter, he is lodged in the house of one whose name is Simon a Tanner, by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Hey, Sister Rachel, God bless you. Immediately, therefore, I said to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. He said, whatever God said to tell you to say, say it. I want to hear it all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Some people want a microwave message. Give me a 30-minute message and the preaching is over. Or I won't listen to you. 
But then there's some, Lord have mercy. I can't stand it when people call in the middle of a sermon. Bless God. They knew I was preaching, and they decided to call. That was the enemy trying to stop it. But let me tell you what I was just saying. They want a 30-minute message, or they won't. Or they won't listen. But there's people that are willing to listen and are hungry to hear the gospel to the point that they stay hours and hours and hours on into the early morning like Paul was preaching about. Paul preached that whole night and into the early morning hours. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it wasn't just one preacher. There were several men that would stand up and give a word from God. Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We get happy with these 30-minute messages, and then we're ready to go and call it a day. But that ain't what God wants. He wants you to tarry a little while with Him. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in my presence. Begin to fall in love with me again. I love what Brother Yule said last night at the house. He told me, he said, Brother, he said, I couldn't even play. His wife told me, he said, she said that, he couldn't even play a video game because God said, uh-uh, sit down and read the Bible. Sit down and get into communication with me. Begin to talk with me, son. Begin to worship me. And he began to worship God. He began to read the Word. And the Lord ministered unto him. The Lord blessed my brother. Hey, Brother Junior, God bless you. Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost done here. Just bear with me a little bit longer. Amen. No Rick music. Amen. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. I love you, Lord. Immediately, therefore, I sent thee, and thou hast well done. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, O oh, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. He got a revelation. He got a revelation of his salvation. And it said, there was, he got a revelation of his salvation that was going to sweep the nation. <laughs> Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I just had to rhyme right there. That's right. No rock music. Bless God. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, Peter opened his mouth and said, Oh, of truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace be, peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. That word I say ye now, I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea. There it is. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, then in all the other most parts of the world. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. The word that I said, Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John had preached. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. He said this all started when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I do love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. But God was with him. Jesus is God in flesh, friends. You need to understand that. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Wait a minute. 
He said, you are my witnesses. The witnesses would stand outside of the temple and would listen for the sound of the priest to stop moving. If the priest's bell stopped ringing, the priest had died. And they'd pull the dope by the rope and he'd be brung out in the street and buried because he had sin in his heart. But the sound, the witnesses were standing by the gate listening for the sound. But look at this. The witnesses weren't clean enough to go into the temple, but God was still able to use them because they were willing vessels. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. It's time we get rid of religious prejudice because you can't hold back what God has promised. This whole message is for somebody today. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I didn't know I was going to preach this whole chapter of the Bible, but I'm getting excited because God is really getting His glory out of this. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And He commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is He which has ordained God. Wait, 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 wait. Him God raised up the third day and showed Him openly. Not to all the people, but under witnesses. Not, oh, wait a minute. Not to everybody. Not everybody got to go into the Holy of Holies. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Not everybody got to go in, but let me tell you, a lot of people ain't hungry enough to stay in the presence of God. He told 500, and uh, he told 500 people to be there on the day of Pentecost. We know this because in 2 Corinthians, Paul said that 500 were present, but 120 got the Holy Ghost. 120 got to be there on the day of Pentecost. Why? Because after a few days, they got tired of waiting on God, and they left. God will wait out the people that are not hungry enough to receive and bring the bounty, bring the banquet to those who will stay hungry for the presence of God. For those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Can somebody say glory to God? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Brother Joey, God bless you. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. I hope people are sharing this message this morning. Thank you, Jesus. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go over here. Verse 40. Him God raised up on the third day and showed himself openly, not, all to, not to all the people, but unto the witnesses, chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he had rose from the dead. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is, hey, Sister Brandy, that it is him. To testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick, of the living, and of the dead. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. The Bible said he has quickened our mortal bodies. There's a quickening happening. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And he's raised us up from a spiritually dead place that our flesh is now dead, but our soul is alive in Christ. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's saying the Lord's going to judge those who are alive in him and those who are dead to Christ at his coming. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth upon him shall receive remission of sins. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My cell's about to die, but while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed that were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He said upon all people he would pour out his spirit. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
That's Acts 2, 17. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. For they heard then, and they of the circumcision heard it. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as we all, as we as well, as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed thee, prayed they him to tarry certain days. He said, Now y'all stay here a little while if you're hungry enough. And the Bible said the Holy Ghost fell as Peter was still talking. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We can preach ourselves ahead of God sometimes. We can preach to the point that when God says enough is enough, they we keep going. We're going to miss God. We need to learn how to shut up and let God talk. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm giving the altar call. If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead. I put my life in your hands. Fill me with your spirit, Lord Jesus, that I might make heaven my home. Wash me and cleanse me. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you prayed that prayer of me, write to me. I want to send you a certificate of sonship. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N O Y 617 at gmail.com. This message has blessed my soul, and I hope it's blessed yours as well. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose your body, loose your mind, loose every inch of your body, every marrow, every bone, every bit of your body be healed from the top of your head and the soles of your feet to the marrow of your bones. Oh, Karabashaya, to the DNA, be healed, even healed in your blood. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Miracles from the body part room in heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, give God glory. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. If you're bound up in your mind, I curse every devil of bondage. The Bible said, He in the sense that's free is free indeed. And according to Nahum 1 9, the attack cannot come back. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So I declare freedom in your mind. Every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction. Every bondage, I command you to be broken and destroyed by the anointing and never rise up again in their life. The anointing destroys the yoke. And I thank you, Father, for removing the yoke before they choke, Father God. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Glory! Hallelujah. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ unto salvation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go and shout and testify of what the Lord has done. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you've never been baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord. Fire. 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 Wash into the water of the Word. I do that prophetically in Jesus' name. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. If you desire to give 
we now have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube. I'm your brother in the Lord. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother HR, and I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. It's always the hour for revival. If you hadn't shared the message, please do now. God bless and bye-bye.